Hello and welcome. Welcome back to another video on Trip. This is part two of my radiator ducting on my case swap the forest. If you watched the first episode, I improved the ducting going into the grill, the intake into the radiator. Now we focus on the air coming out of it. Having a ton of uninterrupted air going in is all great and all, but it's only half the problem. You need to make it where all the air comes out. Which, on the factory, this isn't a bad setup since the radiator is tilted from the factory at an angle, making the air flow out. And I already have hood vents, so it's already already pretty pretty good. Not a bad setup. But we can improve it. I'm going to improve it by building some shooting and ramping the air out upwards towards these holes. I'll throw some pictures of examples of what I want to do. And I've already started taking some of the support, like my radio support. It's already out of here, this is already loose. So yeah, because I was trying to eyeball things and trying to get a plan together. I still need to take some more things out to get it out of the way, but I kind of want you to see what it looks like before that. I need to pull, finish pulling this radiator shroud out. I'm not going to be able to use it. It doesn't really give me any flat good surfaces to mount my sheet metal to, my ducting. So yeah, we're going to have to make a new one. Okay, I got all this stuff out of the way so we can easily access where I need to be. Let's see. This would be a lot easier if I took the radiator out, but this caused a very pain in the butt to bleed the coolant system, the buff it. So I'm gonna leave it in. I don't wanna take it out. Don't wanna mess with it. It's like it takes a few hours to bleed it. So we're just gonna do it in the cold. I have plenty of room so it shouldn't be too bad. But the plan is, or we'll take some sheet metal, so you make a metal plate to cover the back of the radiator, the full length. And I got some slim fans, I got two of these, that will mount to the plate to evacuate the air. I want, I want to go with something, fans that were smaller and thinner to give me more room so it doesn't interfere with the ducting that I plan on making. So that's going to be the first few steps I do. This would also be easier if I had a aftermarket radiator since they normally will have like bolt holes and stuff on the sides for like fans and fan shrouds and stuff. These doesn't, they just have these plastic clips which is going to make it's a little bit harder to make the shooting or have a place to mount the shooting. But we can figure it out. You know, if this stuff was easy, everybody would be doing it. So let's figure it out. I feel lonely by your side in the middle of the night. I feel lonely by your side in the middle. Okay, I got my template made out of CAD. I always recommend do it out of cardboard before transferring it, transferring it over to your metal. Might save some material and money. Definitely some areas where I need probably will add a little bit more material or take away some here and there just to tweak it, get it right on my cardboard before transferring it over. So now I have a good idea of what I need to make. Let's uh, put it on that sheet metal, then cut it out.
Yeah, I got it bent. It's not pretty, but it it will so get the job done. Now I need to test fit it. See if it fits. Yeah, got it installed. Fits pretty good. Of course, I'm gonna have to do a lot of trimming and smoothing out and all that stuff. I'm gonna save that for later. Have my little flap here. It came out okay. Not the best, but it's gonna work. It gives me a place to mount this to this to my other part of the ducting. Currently, I have it not really secured, but I have it where this can't slide down or go up on those little pegs in the back and up here. I'm still gonna have to find a good way to secure it. Now there is gonna be a big gap here. You want the this panel to be off the radiator a little bit. So I'm gonna get some more of this foam, this foam adhesive. I ordered some thicker ones. I'm gonna stick on to this. That way it spaces it off the radiator and also gives it some some cushion. So it's not banging around and stuff on the radio and making a lot of noise and... Okay, I got my fans test fitted. Of course, it's gonna sit a little higher with this. This a rough draft right now. See what it's gonna look like. And I have more of this angle brackets that I'm gonna use to make the duct so the duct has something to connect to. So yeah, I'm getting a pretty good plan together. Next, probably gonna cut my big holes for the fans. I got everything nice and smoothed out. These little standing discs are the best. If you don't have one of those, I'll just get some of those. Makes life a lot easier. I think my circles came out a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. I thought they're gonna be all janky and uneven and stuff. But my fans sort of fit pretty nicely. Of course, I just have to bolt those in. This piece is super thin and flimsy, but once I put this angle iron along the side and along the bottom and on that side for the ducting, it will make it a lot more rigid than it is. But except for the middle, I'm kind of worried about the middle sagging in the middle once I have the weight of the fans. So I'm probably gonna take an additional strip Put it down the middle. I think I'm gonna need something a little bit thicker than this. It's, it's kind of soft, a little flimsy. So yeah, I'm gonna go get a thicker piece, put it down the middle, and also will be more weather stripping down that strip. So I'm worried about it flexing once the fans are on now and smacking the radio in the middle. So yeah, I'll put that strip though to help. There'll also be weather stripping down each side or around it to help protect my radio. Hey, I got my fans on. Looking pretty good, got plenty of clearance. Uh, I temporarily have these screws in here. I will change to this, a flat top head. That way I get a little bit of extra clearance between here and the radiator. I'd rather that bang into the radiator than that. So we'll do that later, but for now, let's mark it up, print on the core, that way we can get our measurements and start our actual ducting, which is the whole reason for this project. Man, look at all that room. So much room for activities, which I already had a lot of room. Now I have even more, which I'm gonna lose once I put the actual duct in here. So give and take, give and take. Uh, for this, I'll probably put it as close as possible to the fan to make it easier to work on. Like that. On both sides. 
and also along the bottom. Hey, as you can see, I have my angle brackets on. Well, not on, just kind of sitting well. They're gonna live. I got all my bolt holes um, marked. Also, the ones for the side where the ducting is gonna mount to. So now I'll take these off and drill my little holes. And I will rivet this to this. So it's nice and secure, not gonna go nowhere. Okay, I got my little support strap. You notice I beveled these holes. That way the rivets lay flush, flat on it. That way they're not sticking up kind of like these are. So this little extra height plus this gasket material should give it enough to where these aren't rubbing the radiator. Should be plenty. Okay, now that that portion of it is done, I'm gonna do a little test fit and see how things are looking. Looks like I have plenty of room. But I am seeing one little small issue is I am gonna have to cut out this little center brace because the duct it's gonna run up to here and I can't go through it so I'm gonna chop it roughly around here that way I can still keep my hood latch I need that bolt hole but everything else should be pretty clear uh, the this ducting is gonna stop right below the intake here so it's gonna interfere with the intake yet See all that? That was the easy part. Now I get, I get to do the hard part, which is actually figuring out that curvature and get everything to curve right. That's gonna be the complicated part. But I think this piece of scrap might actually come in handy. I'm hoping I've used this piece of scrap as a good guide on my radius. It has a pretty good bend, pretty much how I want it. And it's about as, if I put the heel, it's about as far out as I want it. So, this should help me with my measurements, make things go a little easier. So, let's do some more CAD. Hey, I got my side pieces made, cut out uh, to how I like them. Yeah, it took a few tries, but honestly, it wasn't too bad. It took me too long. Uh, so yeah, got those in, and of course now I need to work on the actual. I don't know what's called the bottom slash side piece, the big piece, the piece that does all the work. Yeah, I need to do that piece. Which that piece isn't super complicated at all. It's just essentially a big rectangle that follows the curvature of the side pieces. So as long as it's the correct size and it should be pretty straightforward.
Okay, I got my walls on, cut, shaved down, secured in, bolted in. Uh, now I'm going to work on the other plate. The idea is I'm going to leave a little gap here, a little overlap, and use these little L brackets to secure this to the sides. It should be a pretty easy way to do it. Okay, a little random discovery. When I was cutting this and shaving and stuff, I noticed it was creating sparks, like it would like steel or something. But it's aluminum, so it shouldn't spark. Well, I thought it was aluminum. Turns out, this is a piece of titanium. I look up this number. Titanium. Uh, I didn't know that. I've had this piece for years, a very long time. I've had this, a few sheets of sheet metal. I've had for maybe eight or nine years that I got from work that was getting thrown away. Okay, I got my titanium piece on here and lined it pretty good. Got this folded and now I need to attach this to this. So I'm going to start drilling holes for my, for my little L brackets and attach it. Oh, will you look at that? Got my little titanium piece on, got it all bolted in. Now, a lot of this is temporary. I did order some more rib nuts. I'm going to rib nut as much of this as possible. I just didn't have enough to do it, so I'm waiting for those to come in the mail. Then I'll redo some of this hardware, that way I can take this apart a lot easier. Because I might have to take it apart to put it in here and take it out. Guess I'll find out in a minute. Okay, I tried to get it to fit. It definitely doesn't fit with it together but it's good timing because my rib nuts came in so now I get to take this all back apart and replace a lot of stuff with nuts that way I can use 10 mil bolts to zap it together and apart to make things a little bit easier so let's do that Hey, quite a bit of time has passed, but look, it's in. It's most of the way though. Not 100% done, but pretty close, pretty close. I still have to actually mount it. And still a lot of little fine tuning stuff I need to do. But you can see what it's gonna look like. I got it quite, I didn't ribbon everything, but I did enough to where I can kind of take it apart and put it in piece by piece a little bit easier. It's still kind of a pain in the butt to kind of get down there and get to the screws on the sides and stuff. But it's not terrible. It could definitely be done in emergency situations. I could definitely do a track when I need to. Uh, yeah. I'm liking how it's starting to look. Got a good shape to it. And also, while I was trying to figure out how to actually mount this, they got a pretty clever way of using the old radiator fan. Well, not that radiator fan. My old, old radiator fan. If you don't know, this car was totaled almost a year ago. It's getting pretty close to it. So the, the entire front end of this car has been replaced. And this was from that wreck. And I could have used that fan, but I wanted to save it, maybe to sell or something just in case but pull this out of the scrap and this is how this is fan is just secured it's this little bracket so I'm able to cut it off chop it off press it in on there and it holds it pretty tightly to the radio now I got that side done I tried to clean it up now I need chop that one off to the other side 
And the top portion of this should be pretty tight, pretty sturdy. Probably will even have to secure this. I still have to tackle the bottom. Can't, can't even see it. On the little T part, I might just have to build a wedge of some sort to go in though, into the little T to secure the bottom. It's not gonna go anywhere, it's not gonna fall out. It's just, I need to keep it, the bottom from doing that. So I'm gonna wedge it somehow. And I also still need to cut my radiator support bearing thingy. So yeah, just little things are left. Okay, I figured out my bottom mounting solution. Is I made this little guy. Just slides in this little T like this. Pretty much wedged in there and it wedges it tight. It does a pretty good job. I end up using this guarding edging which used to be part of my lip, my old splitter. Just used some chunks of it. Made two of these and it works pretty good. Also chopped up my support, trimmed off some of the tabs that I don't need anymore, made it to where I can still use that bolt for my hood latch because I like having a hood latch. And I'm also looking at making another angled piece towards the top of the radiator that angles the airflow backwards a little bit because right now a lot of the airflow is probably hitting around this general area. And of course we want it to go back that way, so making a little ramp to direct the airflow will help a little bit. But before I make that little additional flap, little ramp, I wanted to do a test. I have this uh, big fan. If you ever looked in the background of my videos in the carport area, this has been hanging in the carport for a long time. This is from a long time ago when I made my own foam machine. I used to have foam parties in my backyard. Haven't used it in a long time. So I'm going to put it to use and use it to blow air into my radio and I guess feel the wind, see how it feels. I know this isn't going to push as much wind as it would be if I'm driving, but it still pushes enough to for me to launch something from this. And I've learned is I'm not feeling the wind until about halfway through the ducting. So this I'm not getting very much. I'm sure I get more if I was going faster, but majority of the air pressure is back here, which is kind of a good thing. Kind of tells me that less of the wind's hitting uphill, so more of it's hitting towards the front of the vents. So that's a uh, that's good. But also tells me that my other additional piece would have to be at least halfway, if not longer, to be effective. Since I had the fan set up, I figured I'd go ahead and have a little fun with it and do some little string theory. And yeah, the fan's not super strong, so it's not putting a whole lot of pressure, but it's still enough to see. You can see well this section is being affected a lot more. These aren't wiggling as much. But at least I know it's doing something. But I think I am going to hold off on that additional piece for now and kind of button things up and put the car together, take for a test drive and see it out in the daylight. That way I can end this video. So let's put it back together, make it one piece again.
Okay, that is it for this project for today. I'm done to this point. Well, I'm not done done. I still have a few things left to do. I'm just done with the video. Getting a little tired. I've been at it for a few days. Uh, what's left? Uh, I still need to take it back apart and sand it down and paint it. I wanted to get everything done and test it. I just did a test drive, drove it around. Um, did great. There's no like super like rally around anything abnormal. Did pretty good. But yeah, so I will take it apart and I'll paint it all, including the front portion that I did in the last video. So yeah, I'll paint it all, get it good looking, and after I paint it, then I will put on the that um that foam adhesive strips around it to help protect the radiator. Also, there's a few other things I have left to do. Also, while it's off, I need to drill a hole in the side down there where that blue mark is. That way I can run these wires to heal, put a rubber grommet in there so it's just not dangling around. It's just temporary. I'll clean it up. And yeah. I'll also probably make that other little lamp. I didn't want to do it because I would have to take this all apart in order to do it. In order to screw through this, so I'll do that little. It's a pretty simple piece. Another thing that's left to do is I need a the overflow can. Since the overflow used to be here, so I'm going to get another one and mount it somewhere else. You know, down in there, or maybe right here. It's probably not though. I'll figure it out. So yeah, that's definitely on the do list. And I also I might make a third video for this because I want to add another top portion. I kind of future-proofed it a little bit by adding this, this uh, flat piece on all corners in order to put a top piece that even more directs the flow directly off the hood. Something I might tackle later to further improve it. This, this small little steps here and there. Overall, I'm happy on how it turned out. It's one of those projects it it actually took me a few days and it was a lot of work it was pretty tedious it wasn't overly hard it's just tedious a lot of measurements a lot of places where i could have screwed up but it's very satisfying in the end when it all comes together and it turns out the way you want it or even better the way you planned for it um yeah so hope you made it through the end of this video if you did i thank you and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I can always use a few more of those. I always have more stuff come down in the pipeline as I tweak this car, make it better. Uh, track season is coming up fast, so I'm trying to get it ready for this year's good life season and a few other track days. So come back for all that stuff. And thanks again for watching and peace.